So uh, I brought business cards, and uh, you can grab one and email me or leave me yours, and I'm happy to email you all these slides. Uh, so don't worry if, if you don't catch one of the addresses. Uh, but there's a ton of, of really co cool sites that keep appearing with information on the web. And I'm mainly, mainly a business reporter, so uh, I like to find a lot of information that, that tracks money. Uh, and one I'm gonna, a couple I'm going to start with are ones that track government contracts. Uh, there's a federal one, and there's one at the state level in Massachusetts. A lot of different states have sites that track contracts. Some are better than others. Uh, but the federal site is usaspending.gov. Uh, and how many people have used it? Just raise your hands. Uh, only a couple hands. It is really good. It it's, takes software that basically uh, was created by a nonprofit funded by a Sunshine Foundation, uh, and it presents pretty much all the federal contracts you can imagine minus uh, uh, classified ones in a way that you can search by company name, you can search for state, congressional district, uh, agency, product, you can export the data so that you can uh, load it into a database or spreadsheet. Um, for instance, when I typed in Massachusetts, uh, I was instantly able to see how much money was going to this, uh, how much money was going to organizations in the state for uh, federal funding. Uh, seeing the growth, it was $15.8 billion in 2008, and that's more than doubled. It's a lot of money going to companies mostly and some uh, nonprofits and other organizations in federal contracts. Uh, you can see the biggest ones are all laid out there on the front page here, the top five. But you can drill down and see every single one. I mean, there are companies that s sell ice cream. And my dad was on, actually I found him because he ran a home cleaning business uh, years ago that had a contract with an Air Force base. Uh, and you can drill down and see what <coughs> each company sold. Uh, this happens to be the New York Times company, which has sold advertising and subscriptions to different agencies. So if you're looking at a company, it's a great way to get a a sense of what they do and what type of work they do with the government, where you can look at an agency and see where they're handing out the money. So it's, it's very useful and it's definitely worth, worth checking out. Here's the equivalent for Massachusetts. It is not nearly as sophisticated, but worth checking out. It's called compass.com. Uh, it doesn't appear to list every contract, uh, so it's just a slice of it. So it's a good starting point. It gives you an idea of the type of contracts that are out there, the type of information that's available. Uh, but you're not going to find everything. Uh, in, this, in this case, this is just a, a shot of some of the details. You can see uh, there are a lot of different, different categories. Uh, and it's a reminder that whenever you're dealing with a company or agency, a lot of the money they hand out, a lot of the money they spend is through outside contracts. So you can't just look at their own internal budget. You can't just look at the number of employees they have. You also have to consider the outside contracts. And it's, this is, again, a good starting point. Um, again, so some of the websites are incomplete. Even the federal website, which is very, very good, has a time lag. It's not real time. It usually takes three to six months after uh, the fiscal year has ended for it to be complete. Uh, and the state website's even more incomplete, uh, but there, it's just one place. You can also look at company and agency websites, look at their press releases announcing contracts. Uh, n news stories might mention them. Uh, so company filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission will often mention what government contracts they have. So there are a lot of different places. I'm going to talk a little more about the Securities and Exchange Commission filings, because again, I'm a business reporter. I use this stuff every day, and I know a lot of people don't and don't realize how useful it is. Uh, but any firm that is publicly traded, whether it's Apple, whether it's Lockheed, Raytheon, New York Times Company, that sells stock to the public, has to report their financials and a lot of details to the public and to the government, and they do it through the Securities and Exchange Commission filings, which are online. And companies that are about to go public also file those. those um, so there's a lot of different things you'll find. Uh, this is the main SEC website. And 
you'll see there's in red highlighted to the left a button marked search co for company filings and it's worth clicking on that you'll get a, a box that asks you to type in company name and or a ticker symbol which is what it trades for on the, under the stock exchanges and you can instantly get a whole bunch of filings they're under really weird complicated names so I've just listed the main ones S1, that's when a company is launching an IPO, going, selling stock to the public for the first time. 10Qs, quarterly filings. There's an annual report called 10K. There's filings that they give before a shareholder meeting called uh, proxy, also listed as DF14. And again, I'll email all this to anyone who asks. Uh, and an 8K for special events. Sounds like gobbledygook, but it's got a lot of information. Uh, so you just type in a company name and you'll see a list of filings. Uh, in this case, I think I typed in Apple and all the filings start off looking like this, official form. But you find an amazing amount of information. This is, for instance, the compensation for Apple. This year, Steve Jobs just got a token dollar salary. Don't feel too badly for him. He's a billionaire and has huge amounts of stock and other years has gotten huge amounts of money. Uh, but other people are making eight, six million dollars a year for Apple. Uh, there's tons of information. And this is in the proxy before the shareholder meetings. You'll always find compensation for the top five, six people. Uh, in their annual reports, they'll tell you the number of employees, locations, uh, if they have key customers accounting for huge portions of their sales. There's a litigation section, which I always go to first and see if they're reporting a new subpoena uh, or a major lawsuit that I haven't picked up elsewhere. So th these are, are really a mother load of information. Uh, there's other sites that you can also check out for SEC filings. I personally use 10K Wizard. It's a subscription site but I've got it set up so it sends me emails anytime a company I care about has a new filing. Uh, and it has some other features that let you pull up the latest annual report and compare it to the previous year. So if they've changed the description of what their company does, you can see it. I found one company, salary.com, had different versions of their filing to go public. In one vi filing, they mentioned their CEO co-founded this hot uh, tech company, I think it was Infospace in Seattle. The final version didn't mention it. Checked around, turned out he wasn't a co-founder, at least according to the company and, and the guy who's widely considered a founder. And he'd even admitted in testimony that he didn't join the company until four months after it started and left a few weeks later. But I, I only found it because of that difference in, in the filings. Uh, Yahoo.com, great source for, for companies. Uh, it's a great way if you just add it to a portfolio of stocks like you're an investor. You can scan it every day for news uh, and SEC filings. Also has a bunch of other stuff like uh, analysts who follow the company, financials at a glance. So there are a lot of different sources to follow businesses.